Our rights and our freedoms, our flags and our Good morning, Three Rivers Church family. It's me again. You miss me. I've missed you. This is going to be a midweek message than the week before three days for the king. So this is a week of preparation, but it's going to be called Come to the Well. What does that conjure up in your mind? Come to the well. The well. It's an invitation. And it's an invitation not just from the church leadership and the staff team to come to the well. It's an invitation from the Lord to come to the well. Because why do you, why are there wells in the first place? The wells were were built and dug. They had to be dug. They're hard work, but they had to be dug in the right place. They had to be digged in the right place. And the right place was a spring. Wells were wells were built around springs, natural overflows from the ground of God's provision in creation of water, water that was running water, not stagnant water, but running water. And throughout scripture, there's description of water being living water and running water. The inference is it shouldn't be stagnant water. There are still waters, which means that there is still the sense of life in it, but there is also a sense of peace. And we need to just think about wells they were they were provided for cattle and for people for herds for sheep for cattle and for other animals to drink from and when Uzziah when Uzziah had wells dug they were for it says in scripture they were for farmers and for fine dressers so they were for people and for stock now this morning i want us to think about the provision of wells by the Lord for us. There's the well of Bethlehem in scripture and there's that famous occasion when David and his men were in the cave and the 120 men were in the cave of Adullam on flight for their lives from the danger of and jealousy of Saul and they found themselves in Adullam's cave. It was a place where all kinds of people had gathered to support David. And in that place, David, out of his exasperation and frustration, he cried, Oh, that someone would give me a drink from the well of Bethlehem. That was a well of home. Bethlehem is a place of God's provision. And of course, we see that supremely fulfilled in the birthplace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the world. That wasn't an accident. That was divine providence, divine providence. God's hand at work in history to provide the right provision for not only uh, David's descendants, but for the whole of humanity. For God so loved the world. We're drawing from an eternal source. As believers and followers of Jesus, we have available to us the well of salvation. And on many situations, scripture talks about this. It talks about drawing from the wells of salvation, living waters. You know, we need to live. We've been through a period of nearly two years now, but it's 18 months at least. And it's been frustration. There might even be anger, resentment, loss of hope. A sense of despair and desperation. Time to go to the well. When you are desperate and you're in a situation where you're exhausted and tired, we need to drink. That's when we drink water. We drink water for revitalization, for restoration, for refreshment. And I want to suggest to you this morning that we need to come to the well. But the well has not just, this well that I'm talking about has not just been dug by men but actually it's being dug by the Holy Spirit and this well supremely is the well of God where we go into the the Trinity the Father Son and Holy Spirit and we draw from him and from them how do we draw 
We need to draw because it's wells of running water and wells of life. Scripture has many wells. Well of Bethlehem, the well of Abraham, the wells of Isaac, 12 wells that were dug. But wells can dry up. Wells can dry up. They, they actually can be sabotaged. The Philistines sabotaged the wells that Abraham had dug. They, they filled them up with earth. What's your well like? Scripture talks about our hearts being the wellspring of life. Springs give life and give origin to birth, to wells. Springs bursting with life. That sense of spontaneity. That sense that there's something here gushing with hope from the ground. The hope of fulfillment and satisfaction. The hope of sating the thirst, satisfying the thirst. And our thirst has to be, our thirst comes naturally through life. We get thirsty, but what are you thirsting for? What am I thirsting for? I'm thirsting for satisfaction. And the only way, the only drink that I will get, the only drink that you will get is from Jesus through the Holy Spirit, from the Father and from the Son. We need to draw on the Father and the Son and the Spirit th through the Holy Spirit, acting as our water carrier, and so that we then can be filled. And John 8 talks on the last day of the feast, Jesus said, there is a well within each one of us that needs to spring up. And in Numbers, it also says that we need to speak to that well, rise up, O well, rise up, O well, burst forth, with water that will be satisfying and in john 4 that famous story of the well where where jesus said to the woman at the well i will give you water and you will never thirst again we should sing a chorus what never thirst again no never thirst again do we still have that confidence in those words of scripture and the words of the lord jesus has said if you drink of this water you will never thirst again it satisfied the cravings of the human heart. The human heart before salvation and the human heart after salvation. By the way, there should be a difference in our hearts before salvation and a difference in our hearts after salvation. The cravings of the heart before salvation are different from the cravings and the desires of the heart after salvation. Because before salvation, our hearts were absent of the Holy Spirit of any sense of God but when salvation comes we draw on the wells of salvation because we need the waters of salvation to actually revitalize, revitalize restore replenish and refresh we need it for life we need it for satisfaction and we see that in the world the addictions that people follow for satisfaction and fulfillment drugs gambling, sex, people addicted with all of these things. Sex might be different forms, might be, might be pornography, might be a variety of unstable relationships. But these, once we become a believer, there's someone in us who gives us a new desire, a new craving, a new direction, a new focus. And he is the Holy Spirit. If you don't feel the pull of the Holy Spirit when you're tempted and tested, I would say dig round the foundations of the well of salvation. See if it's real. See if it's genuine. See if you are really united to Christ. If there is a real relationship with the divine Godhead, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We come to the Father by the power of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Um, beloved, I'm asking you to draw from these wells. I'm asking you to draw. As I'm drawing to a close this morning, I want to just draw your attention to a verse of scripture in Proverbs 5 and verse 15. Proverbs 5, 15. This is what the Spirit, through the Word, because it's inspired and breathed by the word, by the Spirit, says in verse 15 of Proverbs chapter 5, here's the invitation, drink. 
Drink water. Drink running water, living water from your own sister, from your own well. What's your well like? Is it clogged up with earth or is it free from all blockages? Blockages by set from sin, brokenness caused by sin, weakness because of our lack of reliance and being rooted to Jesus and rooted deeply into his love through through his spirit listen to this drink water from your own cistern or your own well because the word cistern in scripture is the same as the word well and running water from your own well is your well stagnant beloved does it need a good stirring up does it need the weeds and the clogs i went round the side of my house last week and there was water and and it was piling up and it was from a drain and i had to put my hand down the drain and all the sludge came out but when the sludge came out and all the grime and all the muck and boy did it smell it stank to high heaven and you know our sin stinks to high heaven when the holy spirit causes us to go into our own cistern and to pull out the blockages the stones the weeds the mud the silt the stuff that builds up deal with it now don't let it go on until you think you're ready. Let the Holy Spirit convict you of sin, of righteousness and of the judgment to come and of the beauty of the Lord Jesus. You know, when we sin, we hurt him. I am not, I don't repent of my sin because of the consequences or the possible consequences of sin. And sin does have consequences, beloved. It spoils our relationship with Jesus. That is the biggest consequence. It hurts our beloved Saviour and Lord. So as I look at this verse again, let me read it this time without interruption. Drink, verse 15 of Proverbs 5, drink water from your own well and running water from your own well or your cistern. Should your foundations be dispersed ab abroad, streams of water in the streets, The, the exhortation is to not let the water be wasted, but let it flow to somewhere that will make a difference. But let it flow out of... I've given you living water, John 8, in the last day of the feast. You will never, not only in John 4, you will never thirst again, but how do you draw on these wells? And that's where I want to, want to finish this morning. How do you draw from the wells of salvation? You draw from the wells of salvation... You draw through scripture, meditating and reading it and thinking about it, allowing it to become part of you. And you draw on it through the Holy Spirit, through the gifts of the Spirit, particularly through the gift of tongues. Because we go deeper into him with our heavenly language and we draw from deep, deep waters. We draw through praise. We draw through prayer. We draw through worship. When we focus and meditate on him, it says in Psalm 104, let my meditation or may the meditation of him be sweet. Don't we need sweetness? We don't want Mara. We don't, know, we don't want bitter waters. We want waters that soothe and heal and act as an ointment to our spirits and our, and our minds. So draw, drink from these, this running water. Make sure that you keep, that the water is fresh. Draw from the water of the word, draw from the water of life through the Holy Spirit. Sing songs and hymns which remind you of that. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains beloved make sure you're drinking and there's water of life it's the water of the spirit we sing holy and the anointed one we sing those words about him satisfying us he is the altogether one he is the altogether beautiful one if you're dry make sure that you allow the holy spirit to pull out the, the crap the sin, the
the rubbish, the silt, the mud. And to remind you never to go back there again, do as I did the other day. I smelt what I pulled out of that drain and it stunk to high heaven. And our disobedience, our brokenness, if we don't put it under the blood, if we don't allow the Holy Spirit's water to renew and to cleanse, because water cleanses as well as sits thirst, satisfies thirst. It cleanses, it washes, and we need to be washed afresh. And it says in John 14 and John 17, now you are clean through the words that I have spoken unto you. The scripture cleanses us and cleans us up. Beloved, let's get ready for three days for the king and with ex expectation expectation that the holy spirit is going to come as he has come every year that we've done this since i since i came to this church but this year is going to be more because there is more in him there's more satisfaction there is more holiness and holiness holiness is not god being a spoil sport it's saying this is what you were designed for this is how you will fulfill the real potential if you if you are holy as i am holy because holiness is beautiful beyond description too marvelous for words come and see come and taste bless you and let's look forward and let's be expectant for what the holy spirit is going to what he's going to pour out in three days for the king and it's going to be a new day a better day, a different level, because even in even in the lockdown and in the pandemic, we have seen the hand of God in this church work. Preservation, protection, healing, salvation and hope. Yes, are there issues? Are people struggling to come away from their old lifestyles and their old addictions? Yes, they are. But are we going to stick with them? No matter how difficult, no matter how long, we're going to be. My ver my reading this morning was just from C. H. Spurgeon was just one, two, three words: the mercy of God. And I felt that God was saying, Paul, don't forget to be merciful, because I'm merciful to you. Mercy was extended at Calvary. That is where it's supremely seen. And mercy, therefore, I have to extend with compassion and love to my fellow human beings and my fellow believers as we journey with Jesus towards Jesus. Bless you and goodbye. To lay down our lives for the poor and the needy The cross is our call and our